everybody. Phil, bus old man here. Before your very eyes, on your left is my buddy, Buddy. Buddy Lee. Buddy Lee, oh. and on his left is Jeff Morton. Jeff is our inventory man, and Buddy is a bus aficionado and also a steel guitar man. <laughs> and after this video, we're going to go back to the house and do a country tune for you. Buddy brought a steel guitar up from Illinois with him. Jeff has been busy here for four months doing inventory. And I have to tell you, Jeff, you've done a wonderful job. At one time, this entire garage area was full of merchandise of every age and bit. I'm trying to move the camera so we don't get the glare. And as you can see, we've made room now for four buses in this garage. There is so much merchandise that will not fit in the inventory area that we decided to dedicate one bus spot for our snow handling equipment, uh, which turned out to be a good idea. So I'm going to turn the camera over to Buddy, and Jeff and I are going to take you through this chaos. Maybe I never recorded that whole thing. I think it was recording. You well, can... anyway, bus old man here, but Jeff. So we're going to come over here. And what I want to show you here is everything we don't have room for. So it's going to take up the space of two buses. Primarily what this is, is bus parts we've hauled in from all over the country. Uh, with buses being scrapped right and left, we're trying to accumulate parts that we'll need to keep our vintage bus operations going and provide parts for those of you who are trying to get a bus put back together. Some of you are buying buses that, were, that started out to be mobile home projects, whereupon the owners of the bus gave up. They found out that buses are money pits, whether you like it or not. And so what's happening here is they're giving them up. So we're finding buses that are loaded up with parts and they're unable to complete them. So anyway, what we have over here in this area, are engine and transmissions that are in some state of assembly or disassembly. This is valuable stuff because altogether we could probably make two engines out of five buckets of engine parts or pallets of engine parts. In front of this here, this is a fuel can for this engine. This is a completed engine ready to go on a bus. It's, it's a transit engine. As you can see, it has the VS, VH transmission, the V-Drive automatic transmission. This bus is out of a GM old look transit. Buddy, if you want to swing around behind you, you'll see a shelf full of brand new valves and bearings for the 671, or I should say the 71 series engine, whether there are a four or a six. Guys, primarily what we have here is stuff for GM old look and new look transits. I know most of you have motor coaches, and we have several parts for motor coaches, but not as much as we do for transit. So if you ever get an idea that you'd rather have something that takes up less space, easier to maintain, and you don't plan on making a big deal motor home out of it, something that you can travel around with lightly, easy to get in and out, and like a smaller version of a motor home, uh, 
They, all look, and new look transits are handy for that. They're not expensive to buy, they're not expensive to maintain, they're not expensive to keep running. So consider that. Over around the corner here, you'll see we have a nice stock of starters and DC generators. And up above, we have lots of different seating arrangements. And God only knows what's in the boxes. What do you know about what's in the boxes, Jeff? Are those unpacked boxes yet? Uh, a lot of them are like emblems. Um, a lot of it's not even bus parts, it's just a uh, pellet. Just what? It's a pellet full of memorabilia albums. Oh, memorabilia and albums. That'll be for the Bus Boys Collection Library. Uh, we intend to create a library. Also, another thing about busboys is Stan, right now, who is the chief of busboys, along with his brother Dan, down in Rochester, Minnesota, later they're going to start taking memberships to the busboys collection. And we're going to talk more about that later this spring. Today, Stan is celebrating the post-birth minor operation of his son, George, who was born, what, three weeks ago? About three weeks ago. So Stan is a brand new father now at 60 years old, <laughs> and his lovely wife, April, who is 26 years old. Way to go, Stan. I thought I was doing good with a wife 30 years younger than me. And Buddy and Jeff here haven't had that experience yet, but they'll get to it. They'll start chasing women uh, half their age. And at my age, even women half my age are too old. So let's move on. So this is the clutter in the garage area. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff to take us on a tour of what he's been doing here for the last four months. Yeah? Mm, I haven't been doing anything, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this, this is both Ellie and Scott Cloud and Clear and Scott Cooper Cannon. This was full of uh, boxes on pallets, and it was probably about this high. And uh, got this all cleared out and put it all up, up in the rafters here. And we'll get some more lights on it. So while you're talking, I'm going to go ahead and turn lights on. And why don't you take them to your little operation center here and show them my shop. And then I'll meet you all upstairs. This is uh, where I set up my office, put a desk in here. Explain how you've inventoried everything. Uh, Use Microsoft Excel to uh, inventory all the bus parts. A lot of editing on this because I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, does Phil have like a separate downstairs area that he works in? No. Or is it mainly upstairs? Just, Th this area right this here? This area and all the inventories up there. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. What is this? Is this like new things that you've been organizing? Just my sorting table and you know, just trying to sort of keep parts that are kind of light, you know, together. Uh -huh. And whatever doesn't have a part number, just put them in, up in, with light parts, and just write it down in the computer and the inventory sheet. And then, then do you organize them upstairs on the shelving? Yeah. Camera on this uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to expect everybody to read this while he's holding the camera on it. So uh, push your pause button or pause the video so you can read this. Rear glass. This one. 5105 series. Just different glass. Take glass. That would be extremely rare, wouldn't it? To yeah, find. Yeah, I bet. Oh, here we got oil, oil filters, oil parts, a couple housings in here. I haven't really organized this yet. I have a drawer full, drawer full of these. Phil, do you know what these are called? Those are oil. Those are cartridge oil filters. That's the bracket that mounts to the engine block to hold that oil filter cartridge. Typically for the V-71s, do you know what these are called? Those are the sock filters that fit the GM-671 transit engines. Window parts, window screen, window frame, some more glass, those windows. Got the accelerator cable, more glass. Motor is still in here. This starter motor is in the wrong place. It's heavy, but it's got to go down the stairs. <laughs> um, this this area actually I, I, I haven't organized this stuff. I have to go in different areas. And what are these up here? Starter parts. Well, this hasn't been organized either. I, I think this is for the uh, foot foot. Uh, the throttle? Foot feet? Yeah, throttle. What is that throttle solenoid? And yeah, this has not been organized. These are voltage regulators. These are big. That one's out right on a bracket. Voltage regulator and relay. Uh huh. And do you have any alternator parts? Back on in this aisle, like diodes and uh, inner in, interior parts. Um, the, well, down, down below we do. Yeah, they're heavier, I, I would heavier just parts are going to leave down there. They're kind of, you know, back behind all those other pallets that we were looking at. Okay. Against the wall there. Before you get too far, let me show you the. Jeff has found a box of brand new magnet coils for the transit shifting mechanism. So we're lucky to have those and we have some spares if you're working on a transit that has open coils. But they very rarely open. So 99 times out of 100, the coil is not the problem. The problem is these pin hole valves plug up so you can see this armature barely moves less than a 32nd of an inch but down in here the little pin hole is plugged up so it's not moving air and you're tempted to think these coils are bad and they're not but in case you have a bad one we have some we can spare no hoarding it's only for a project you have What's on the other side here, Jeff? All kinds of heater fans and dashboard fans and what all else? Yeah, they're kind of facing the other way from the dial. Dial. Let me see what the other side is. How many times I've hit my head on these concrete <laughs> beams? But uh, well, back here, this, this is all body parts. This is 
these two columns, uh, brackets, window latches, exit door latches, more body parts and panels. Lights. GMC emblems. Let oh. that drawer out once just for those lights. Here, folks. Our turn signals. Recognize them? Now, these are the adapters that people went ahead and made to hold a light bulb in this globe with the original lens. Now, where are they, Jeff? Let me show you what we have to replace those. Where are those, Jeff? Here we go. Look here, folks. Here's the genuine article, a genuine sealed beam that was replaced with this, a light bulb. So what happens here is this lens rusts away, the light bulb gets corroded into the socket, and you have a mess on your hands. So what we have here, where is that drawer with those new, new, uh, new look stuff in it, Jeff? Well, here's a whole drawer full of stuff. If you have one of the buses with the stop lens, this is going back into the 30s and 40s. We have those. Here we have miscellaneous type turn signals. I believe these are well, you guys know what they are. You've seen them. I think these are the 4104s, 6s, stuff like that. So we have a lot of this stuff now. Phil, do you have the center stop lens that's right in the middle on the back of the silver sides? The bigger stop that lens? That triangular one, you mean, like this? Well, I think it may be round, but it sits right in the center uh, on the back of the The bus. silver sides had that triangular shape one with the STOP. Okay. That was one glass lens. We have none. We haven't found any. We're thinking about reproducing them, but we haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, so I know exactly what you mean. And the same with the upper and lower pieces that are part of that whole circle. Uh, we don't have any of those, but they're not hard to make. But here's the trick, guys. If you're going to make those, if you make them out of plexiglass, clear plexiglass, red, yellow, or whatever, what's going to happen is the bright filament of the bulb is going to glare through one spot. There's going to be one light. Spot. Those have to be designed so that they're, what's the word, opaque, so that they're, they're milky. You can't see the bulb through the glass or the plastic. In other words, when the bulb glows, the light is spread across the whole piece. I believe the word is opaque. Okay, so while I'm here, moving on. Wow, you really got this drawer crimped. These speedometer cables go upstairs with the uh, car parts, Jeff. Okay. So here is a speedometer drive unit. You know, and I, I have had two requests, not from you guys out there, but from guys here in the garage. Why don't you have a what is it session? So I believe that I better hold off on identifying things for our what's it session. Uh, I have no idea what prize will offer if you guess the right thing. I don't know what's in these bags. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Brand new turn signal harnesses. And I have no idea what these bus, what bus these fit, so I'll just let you look at them with these Amphenol connectors. They're probably the newer MCIs. 
but this is not an MCI part number. So you could guess that, what that fits, and let, let us know, and then we can mark these bags. Okay. It's in the next drawer. Okay. You all recognize these little handy-dandy relays. In your car, they worked for your horn. In buses, they carry the heavier loads, like horns, door relays, and what have you. So we have plenty of those around. Brand new in box. If I show this stuff too quickly, just hit your pause to get a better look. Here's more of these. If you ever rode a city bus, a new look, the early new looks, you'll recognize this. Where was that located? I don't remember what these were. So we'll make this a, you'll guess it. There's something there you'll recognize. This is the emergency stop solenoid. Those of you with 71 series engines, there are two things you do before you even try to start one of those engines. The first thing, Scott, Bus Grease Monkey warns you about, make damn sure the fuel racks move before you crank the engine. Because when the engine stops, the racks open wide open, or almost wide open. And the injectors will stick there and lock that into that wide open position. And when you start the engine, it's going to take off and run wild because they're stuck. They can't back off. The second thing is the emergency stop. Make sure that works. That's an electrical switch. It pulls this and flips a diaphragm on the air intake. And you have seen me do that on the transits on one of my earlier videos. Okay, here are some more lenses, boxes of lenses. Remember the cheap little marker lights that came on the late model new looks? And we have these, which came on the Max. This is a standard issue truck, and uh, many of you bought these to dress up your pickups, I'm sure. So you recognize those. We're, I'm just grabbing drawers here at random. Here's more for you New Look fans. The late model New Look. Fix that, Jeff. Step lights. You might as well get your step lights working because everybody sees them. Every video you do, people are going to be looking for step lights. Now that I started that, uh, okay, and here we go with more brake parts. Radius rod bushings. Okay, what else? Miscellaneous MCI lights. There we go. You recognize these? We have a bunch of these reading lights in case any of you find some missing or broken. These are these cheap Like a, like a unit light. These come in 12 and 24. They come in tail light or stop and tail or turn and tail. They're available yet. And then the odds and ends marker lights. We have a few brand new ones. So that's 
Oh, here's your fan collection. Oh, I see why you said other stars. Look at that. Look at all that neat stuff. Here's the floor fans for uh, the old luck transits. I've gone over these and make sure that they all work before I put them up here. Uh, I'm not going to dig out something to find it's defective, so I'll check them out before I put them up here. Here's a pile of stuff I have no idea what. These look, oh, like trim parts. Okay. Okay, let's move to the next aisle. Are you over at the next aisle, Jeff? Okay, go ahead and meet him over there. Okay, this aisle I've been reorganizing inventory these drawers because a lot of these drawers already have parts in them. Um, this side have switches, lots of switches. This one's... You can explain that that rust penetrant can sitting there. Oh yeah, that's right. Really... Raise that in the drawer so they slide easier. Yeah, get, get a little uh, move on those rollers down there. <laughs> What's in that drawer? Oh, lots of switches, big switches, little switches, toggle switches, push button switches. Okay. Those ends. A lot of springs, different miscellaneous springs, large for larger springs. Okay. Those are either brake return springs or they're the clutch return springs in the uh, old luck transmissions. That's not good. <laughs> no, it isn't. Full of thermostats? Yeah, thermostats, yeah. This one, this looks like for a car or a house. Hmm? That's part of a refrigeration system. Okay. Yeah, that's a pressure cutoff for air conditioning or, or walk-in cooler. Miscellaneous pulleys in here. These drawers are heavy. <laughs> I got big, big pulleys in here. Lots of water pumps, seal kits, and pipes. Um, I don't know, did you want to talk about these? Is this a fog light? What does he want me to talk about? I didn't know anything about buses when I started, so I'm still learning. <laughs> well, this is an old rusted headlight assembly. It came out of the uh, silver sides with the yellow fog lights. And wherever we find any of these, we keep them because the seal beams still light. I don't recommend you run with these lights on because we don't know how much more life is left in the filament. So just show them off. Just turn them on to show them off, but don't drive with them on. Don't waste what's left of the filament running lights that aren't necessary because they're going to burn out and then you're going to say, oh, why didn't I turn them off? So just have them on to show off and then turn them off. You want to put that back, Jeff? I didn't see where you got it. Oh, I see. In a drawer, in a, okay. Empty bin. <laughs> Down below here, This is out of the 5105s. This rubber gasket is what held the whole headlight assembly in. We're not throwing them away just because they're rusted. They can be repaired. Okay, where are you now, Jeff? We got lenses in here. More lenses. 
Some of you have buses that still use the big, pretty marker lights before those little plastic triangles were put in service. So, if you have one and it's a broken lens, let me know. Okay. What have you done to our gasket? We can't get in. Oh my God, what is this? Move this crap out of the way. Slide some of out of the way. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I show you our gaskets. We do have gaskets. We have gaskets and gaskets and gaskets. We have a plethora of gaskets. For every conceivable use. On and on and on. Some of you may need these little ones. Hey Jeff, what's wrong? <laughs> Put some of your juice here. Here's some of the different types of gaskets for sealing valve covers and what have you. More engine parts, gaskets. Here's head gaskets for your Chevrolet gas engine. And so on. So there you have it. Okay, Jeff, pick it up. Oh, wait a minute. Remember I told you we had stuff? If, if you need, we have these assemblies, the speakers and the reading lights in one assembly. These are working parts. We took this out of an MC, what? 51 and 52, what are those? Those are nines, MC nines. So we have some of those if you need them. What else up here, Jeff? Well, we have uh, instrument panels for your dashboard. Mm, that looks pretty old. <laughs> a drawer full of different dash knobs and panels. Phil, oh, there's a fur box back here. Come on. This looks like the whole thing. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the newer model Johnson. You can kind of keep it turned the way it was there. Uh, this was one of the newer models that took all sizes of change, quarters on down. This had the inspection plate that the operator could start and stop if he suspected you're cheating on your fare. He'll stop this from moving while he looks at the fare. That gives you about five seconds to decide if you're going to pay the rest of the fare you owe or get thrown off the bus. These numbers indicate this panel is not on right now, I know where it is. But these indicate the two types of tokens that were available from the streetcar days. And this indicates the number of quarters. And this indicates the value in cents of all of the other coins that are dropped in the fare box. We have a bus equipped with one of those fare boxes and I'll show it to you more this summer. Okay, Jeff, back to you. I'll uh, put this back here.
Got four doors of steering parts. Why aren't these? I thought there were lights back there. Weren't there lights back here? Yeah, you have to plug it in. There's an extension cord right down by the outlet on this other side here by LC. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Most of the gas is in the shaft. Okay. Pump. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, let me see. If find a part here. I want to ask Phil what these, what you call these? I think they're worm gear. Worm gear like shaft. Oh. Yeah, that's part of the steering assembly. That's a steering assembly. A lot of parts give the part number, but not the name of the part. <laughs> well, you'll get so that you can separate the part numbers. You'll know what's flex, what's Mac, what's GM. Okay, anything else in this aisle? Uh, I'd like to... Do you know what this is? Should this go downstairs? That's a bell housing or something. It doesn't look like it's big enough for a bus. That looks like... Yeah. It's, it's part of an automatic transmission. Yeah, it's... it's okay. That could be off of uh, one of the V drives. Uh, I don't know for sure. It's, uh, you couldn't find that part number, huh? Uh, that one I did not look up. Okay, look it up and see what you find. It looks like it's part of the V-Drive system. I love this little... See this little light? Now, look at that shade. If you were riding streetcars in the 20s, or if you went to a public school in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you would have seen these glass shades. They took them off the streetcars towards the end of operations because the little set screws would come loose. This globe would drop down and break the bulb and the bulb and the globe would drop down on the floor of the streetcar and shatter or bounce off of somebody's head. So, for safety's sake, they removed the shades, and most of the pictures you see of streetcars in the 40s and 50s, they have bare bulbs for the dome lights, and they all came with shades, and that's how they ended up. Okay. More marker lights and lenses. If you have fluorescent dome lights, we have ballasts for them. 12 and 24 volts. That's too far down for me to go. Let's see what's back in here. Open space. Well, We're going to be putting up some shelving back in here. Also, we're going to be installing another heater for the garage. Uh, these new buses with that DEF diesel fuel additive are giving us no end of grief in the cold weather. In the cold weather, the DEF diesel emission fluid mixed into the fuel tank is plugging up the fuel filters. Already we have enough trouble with this corn liquor they call biodiesel. Now the DEF is gelling up the fuel filters. So it means we're going to have to keep these buses warmer in storage. So we're adding another heater here. And then this area Jeff is going to put shelving in and continue to move and unpack more merchandise. Behind you, you'll see merchandise that is unpacked yet. Six years ago, we had a fire here in the shop, 
and the salvage company took all of our parts from the entire building, packed them in boxes, and put numbers on them. We have no idea what's in these boxes because they didn't give us a computer printout. We don't even know if they bothered to do a computer printout. Anyway, we end up with boxes full of stuff we don't know until we open them. So it's like Christmas here every day. So, also, we're accumulating quite a few of these big heavy-duty gaskets for doors and windows, and we may have some of those available as time passes. So, there you have it. Can you think of anything else, Jeff? Uh, this is all air compressor stuff. Air compressor, air, air compressor. Air compressor or refrigerant compressor, or both? I think both. Okay, so he knows what they are already. Knife going, Jeff. <laughs> I don't have to dig out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is saunter through the shop and go out and see if we can get 1303 started and take a ride around the block to wrap up this video. Then we have a special treat for you. Back at the house, Buddy and I, who once did music, country music, old Fender flat top, and we did an old Marty Robbins tune for you. So we're going to show you that when we get back to the house. Back up just a little bit and introduce the music part. I bumped a button and it shut off right before you did that. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay, so we're finished here now, and I guess we're going to take the ride on the bus now. I'm, I'm not, and then uh, what happened was the camera stopped, and I didn't get a chance to tell you that. After that, we're going to wrap up this session. Uh, back at the house, we're going to do a little country piece. Je uh, Buddy played steel guitar with some of the country bands around the country, and I played around the Twin City area and some of the local country bands in the late 50s and through the 60s. So him and I got together and put together a Marty Robbins piece that we'd like to do for you. That will wrap up this video session. Coming up next will be a sequel to this inventory and a history of the collection of the inventory and how we accumulate this stuff and that will be presented by Stan Holter and he'll also present a little bit more about the Bus Boys collection organization so that's it for now we're going to go out and take a ride around the block on the bus and then we're going to go back to the house and do the little musical piece for you. Thanks for joining us today, and I'll see you later. And thank you, Jeff, for all the work you do here for Bus Boys, and keep up the good work. And don't let it go to your head. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Hi. Well, time ran short and the video ran long, so we decided not to do the bus ride today. We'll get to that another time. So I'm just going to put the pieces together. Uh, the camera kept stopping and then uh, Buddy discovered why that happened. So anyway, uh, we're going to say goodbye for now and hope you enjoy this video the inventory and then the little piece of music we did for you later and uh, my puppies and i are going to lay down and take a nap now see ya oh i better stop this first oh my goodness sake now i know this is not a bus. And my friend Buddy Lee knows this is not a bus. It's not a bus. But 
everything in the world is a boss. So, I'm going to waste your time today with a couple of little clips here uh, showing our lack of musical talent. <laughs> Buddy on the pedal steel, and yours truly, if I can get this flat top to sit on my knee here, this isn't really the right chair for this, so I'm not sure, but I'm going to give it a try. My fingers are getting sore. So what song are we doing? So we're going to do the Marty Robbins one in D, Love Me. something else so we'll fiddle around with the dobro a little bit too <laughs> 